Last time I got myself armored up, but this time I think I'm going to be enhancing a bit of my tools and magical items. Welcome to the mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Rustic Waters 2. I was taking a look at the quests, and it looks like there's a bunch of really cool offensive and or just unique and useful items that I could potentially make that I have yet to make with Ars Magica. And with my new armor set of All Protection 4 and a bunch of decent armor, I can't say I'm complaining so far. Without further ado, I thought we'd jump into it and start making uh, a few of these items along the side here, starting with the Enchanter's Sword. Due to the pre-enchanted nature of the Enchanter's Sword, click on the above image to view its recipe instead of using JEI's default view. Let's actually take a look at that for now. Yeah, it comes pre-enchanted with looting 5 and sharpness 10. That's pretty good. I already have an activated idol of sacrifice. I used one uh, not too long ago, just in case I needed some levels. Um, so, and I would imagine I'll probably need more. Source gem block, not a problem. Block of gold, glyph of touch. Yeah, th those aren't a an issue at all. And I even have several diamonds, so I should be good. The enchanter sword is a very powerful weapon that crafts with a power 10 and looting 5 enchant. It can be imbued with a spell at the scribe's table. When you strike an enemy with this sword, the spell that it has imbued will automatically cast at the target. When imbuing the spell, note that the sword has a built-in touch form, so the rest of your spell build must contain only augments and effects to that form. As that requires the scribe's table, I figure, well, let's divert over here momentarily to make this and then we can continue. Some imbuable items offer benefits, such as the mirror, granting the attached spell 100% duration increase. Wait a second, the enchanter's mirror, isn't that? Oh, so we're going to complete this one and that one <laughs> by getting the reward. Okay, the scribe's table will allow you to transfer spells that you have created in your spellbook to items that can be imbued by those spells. For instance, imbuing the enchanter's bow with a cold snap spell will cause whatever target you hit with an arrow to also be hit with cold snap. Right-click an imbuable item onto the scribe's table. Make sure your spellbook has the appropriate spell selected. Shift right-click on the table to imbue the item on it. I wonder if you can even overwrite these. So if I get like better spells later on, I can just overwrite it. I would assume so, but hey, let's let's just jump in here. Scribe's table's made from some archwood slabs, uh, any of the archwood logs, and a couple and a few sticks. Uh, that's pretty easy considering I've got botany pots generating lots of archwood. So to start, let's do those slabs, that log, and some of those sticks, and we get a scribe's table. Looks really fancy. I'm just going to put it over here for now so it's kind of in this area. Uh, I did have a bookworm lectern, by the way, and I have to say the uh, the little animal uh, or critter that this is with the, the book wings and the pages and stuff, it, it's absolutely lovely. I, I do like it a lot. <laughs> but we're not getting into bookworms today. We're getting into scribes tables. Uh, that, that's for another day. And instantly that gets us the enchanter's mirror, which then grants us a jar of light as well. The enchanter's mirror is an item that casts a spell with the self form inherited. This is great for imbuing spells that heal or buff you. The Enchanter's Mirror also comes with the added benefit of increasing the duration of any of the effects within your spell. That's pretty handy, and a Jar of Light. Not sure what that's going to be good for yet, but I'll take it. Looking at the Jar of Light, it summons a light that will follow the user as they move, can be summoned and dismissed at any time. Oh, that's pretty cool. Do I have that Jar of Light? Yeah, so if I... Uh, how much time do I have left on this? Night Vision is going to go out in a couple minutes here. So I'll wait for that to go out, and then we'll try messing around with the Jar of Light and see if, how that works. I've never used it before. And as I have an Enchanter's Mirror that can be inscribed with a spell at the Scribe's Table... Hmm, maybe I use that. Oh, I forgot. Uh, remember how I said I wasn't going to do this? Well, I changed my mind. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to take those Hateful Hearts I got from the Frost Maws plus my spell book and upgrade things. I bought a Totem of Undying from the Bully Man Trader and got one of those, so there we go. I've committed, and I now have the uh, highest tier of this, which grants me two enchanted spell turrets. Tier 3 Archmage book sp spell book is the highest tier of spell book. It grants the highest bonus to mana cap and allows you to cast spells which are built from glyphs up to tier 3. Looking up spell turrets, it says here, turrets can be used to cast spells when given a redstone signal, functioning like a dispenser. Turrets will accept spells that use touch and projectile. Spells may be set using an inscribed piece of spell parchment in order to draw 
In order to cast spells, turrets will draw source from nearby source jars. They may use item pickup and place block as long as an inventory is placed adjacent to this. So this isn't actually a, a thing that's going to like just shoot foes. You, you could probably set it up to do so. But uh, it sounds like you could get it to automate several different things. Enchanted spell turrets cast spells at half the cost compared to basic spell turrets. Oh, lovely. Timer spell turrets will automatically fire on a timer. And as it says here, it can provide compact and efficient automation. Examples include configurable redstone clocks, one block tree or chop or crop farms, rapid smelting with fortune or mob farms with looting. Huh, pretty cool. As I've never used them before, I still feel a little bit clueless about it, but I do understand a little bit more about how they can get used. Okay, so it would seem that my night vision has worn off. Let's try using this jar of light. Oh, so does it actually... Oh, I getcha. Okay. So it just kind of has this little floaty light that will generate about where I'm at. Okay. All right, that's kind of cool. That So it places... It does like replaceable torches that pick up and replace as I go. That That's pretty neat. I do like that. Okay, so enough with the diversions for the moment. Let's actually go back to this enchanter's sword, see if we can make one of these. I'm going to get all these items that I talked about earlier, and we'll see about adjusting them. Apparently it needs to go in the enchanting apparatus. And I think that the diamond sword is the central item again, so I should not be putting that in place. Uh, though I will put down all these other items. And there we have it. It is now in doing the enchants taking up a little bit of source from my massive stores and I get one enchanter sword that is already really strong. I mean currently I'm doing 10 damage with this though it does have a little bit of damage absorption um, and bonus damage to undead. What does it do? 50% damage to undead so it's doing more than this uh, to undead and it has sharpness one on it right now nothing really fancy but obviously this one has sharpness 10. <laughs> It's doing a little bit better. So currently I now have this sword. If I put that in place, okay. And then if I look at my spell book, I have, which one is it right now? Number one, which is magic missile, which is projectile and harm. Um, I don't really have any other harm effects in here. Uh, I think I might have like cut, but I don't think that does nearly as much damage. And looking at the rest of my spells and options that I have here, I don't really have much that's going to do uh, anything useful to an enemy without me crafting specific uh, augments or anything. So if I sneak click on here, invalid spell, swords accept effects and augments only, such as freeze extend time. So what I need to do is create a new one, like number seven here, and then don't put any forms. Uh, the only augment I have uh, does not really help, so I'm just going to choose harm and just call this one harm. Create that and then when I sneak click, Set spell. Okay, so does that mean does that mean it, it worked? Touch harm amplify. Okay. Oh, oh, it automatically amplifies it as well. So now this is a thirteen point five damage sword plus harm damage, and it has looting five and sharpness. Jeez. Uh, okay, this thing's pretty powerful. So let's next try this mirror. Uh, let's see what kind of spells I can put in here. This one I'm going to call help, and I've got uh, water breathing. I've got a uh, fire extinguish, I've got slow fall, I've got a shield effect, and invisibility. We'll see how this works, if it even works. So sneak right click, set spell. Okay, so if I grab this, and then I have, the only effect I have right now is regen 3, and that's just for my food buffs. So if I click this, oh wow, yeah, I got slow falling, invisibility, water breathing, and magic shield, and if I was on fire, I would have been put out. Uh, so that's pretty darn cool. So I now have a light source that can follow me around, a way of buffing myself as well as putting myself out if I'm uh, on fire. I can loot mobs very effectively with a much more powerful sword, and currently I can use my my spell book to like shoot things at range, but so let's look at the enchanter's bow. It's a very powerful bow that crafts enchanted with power 10. This bow can be imbued with a spell at the scribe's table. Once imbued, striking a target with an arrow from the bow will also hit the target with the imbued spell. Augment arrows can be crafted for your enchanter's bow that will make the spells imbued even more powerful. Oh, and the reward is a bunch of those augment arrows. 
Let's do amplify times two. Oh, so it does like if I use harm on that, it does the bow arrow damage plus the extra harm damage, and it doubles that harm damage with that. Oh, that's pretty cool. This one takes a little bit more effort. It takes an entire block of blaze rods, which would be nine of them. Another one of those idols of sacrifice, source gem blocks, block of gold, a diamond strengthened longbow, which is uh, it's just a couple diamonds and a handle, which isn't too bad. And then a glyph of toss, which is magic clay plus a dropper. So this will take me a few minutes to get this assembled, but I'll be right back. I kind of ran out of gold, uh, but what I can do is put in a little bit of some gold in the pulverizer here, and it should at least double it, which is the only means I have available at the moment. There are other ways that I could enhance my ore production, but for the moment, I think I'm just going to go with a few here, and then I'll save the rest of this gold ore for something a little bit better later. So I think that just about does it. Now all I need to do is add the bow, and I should be getting an enchanter's bow. Wasn't too bad. I am getting a little bit low on some of the materials that were required in that recipe. But just the same, I now have an enchanter's bow. So here's the question. I have no arrows. It will not shoot. Okay, I was going to ask, will it shoot without arrows? I don't. <laughs> Apparently, it's not a thing. So let's put this down. And we'll go back to that harm spell, but I just remembered there's I have a freeze option here that should slow a target for a short time. So I'm definitely going to be adding that. Might even add that to the sword. Sneak click, and it has been set. And I've now set a new spell for the enchanter's sword as well. So that should have the slowing effect and the harming effect. And yeah, this has power 10 on it. Projectile harm freeze. Projectile harm freeze amplify. Oh, it doesn't get amplified on this. Well, still, it's a bow. So, I mean, let's give it a go with some of the uh, ammunition I've been hauling here. Actually, I think I get, yeah, there we go, a stack of those uh, special arrows. The augment arrows. Oh, those are not cheap. That's two blocks of source gems, plus any kind of arrow and a glyph of amplify. Wow. Maybe I save those for, like, boss battles or something? I've got uh, about a half a stack of arrows. I've got some prismarine arrows and explosive arrows and arrows of slowness and shulkers and yeah, a bunch of just interesting arrows in general. But let's give this a go and just try using it so I know what it looks like. It froze the water outside. Did not want that to happen, but now I know <laughs> that that freeze will do so. And it affects an area, not just an entity. So... Okay, and that used up an arrow, and I cannot recover the arrow because it was magically made or enchanted or something. All right, so ammunition is something to think about. Something I, else I noticed is that the, the bow didn't actually take any damage. Um, and I wonder if the sword is the same way in the mirror. So these are like immune to taking damage from, uh, well, like death <laughs> in my case. Now the armor I think has like a low durability so I do worry about that and if I could put infinity on the enchanter's bow I would be a much happier person for it well I don't have uh, any infinity in here I do have punch uh, and punch two and quick shot two so I feasibly could add those on an anvil first I think I'm going to just make a regular enchanted book from those. Uh, actually, it looks like it, it is more expensive, well, but then it would have gone up as I added two. Uh, and I can show you guys with this sword. It doesn't have sweeping on it, but it does have looting five. Uh, here, I, I will show you guys what I have up above. Obviously, there's the pig farm, and I'm going to use this sword instead. This silver great sword has a sweep three, so it does lots of damage to a large arc. Uh, sharpness 4 and Wisdom 4, which increases its uh, XP. So this is kind of like my XP farm a bit. I just kill a bunch of pigs and get a lot of XP for it. And yeah, you can see I, I've got plenty here. Not to mention I've been getting plenty of these shards, so you'd probably notice my health has been going up as well. I would suggest that clumps be added though, because that does take a while to collect all that XP. That just gets me up to level 30 right there. So I'll be back uh, to pick on the pigs later if I need to, but because of that XP bonus, I'm definitely going to be using that. And I think I have just enough XP for me to do what I intend on doing here, and that is first and foremost enchanting this a little bit more uh, so that it's got power 10, punch 2, and quick shot 2. Now that costs me 7 XP levels. I still have 20 left. 
I had used 10 earlier just to make the bow, but I also have 18 of these enchanters, or these uh, heart crystal shards, which means 20 levels will be needed to get two more hearts. There we go. Now on like row number three of my hearts. Either way, I'm pretty good about it. Now with that quick shot two, oh, that is so much quicker to, uh, oh gosh, I keep freezing water, to uh, pull back the bow. I should have just aimed elsewhere or switched off to another weapon instead of shooting that arrow because I don't have any left. I do have some chicken seeds, so I might have to make myself a chicken farm just so I can get a bunch of feathers for arrows and such as well. Uh, I think I'm going to leave the uh, the pups here for a moment because there is something else I wanted to check out while I've got this stuff going. Oh, but before I do, I forgot there there's still one more thing. Ring of greater discount. Oh, so there is still a little bit more I can kit myself out with. As your biggest restriction within Ars Nouveau is the amount of mana you can spend, there are numerous curios that can be crafted to increase your maximum mana and mana regeneration. A mage with a full set of Archmage armor, Enchanter's weapons, and Arcane curios is nigh unstoppable. Oh, it gets an amulet of mana boost for a reward. Nice. Okay, well let's put one of these on here. It's an enchanting apparatus item. I think I've got all these uh, this stuff right here. A ring of lesser discount. Okay, yeah, we're going to be getting a little bit tight on the diamonds, but I think we're still all right. And a ring of potential, which is made with just a bunch of iron nuggets and source gems. Okay, let's start with the first ring. And I have no idea if I can have multiples of these. I would guess I probably could. Uh, let's see, end of pearls, diamonds, and source gems. And now just to place everything in here, and I think, oh, I ran out of space. That should be the last of it. Then I put the Ring of Potential in the center, and it'll make the uh, the better trinket, which is the Ring of Lesser Discount. Okay, and then I need to take that and remake it again with an Enchanting Apparatus to make the Greater Discount. There we are, and this should get me that upgrade at the cost of a lot of diamonds and such. And there we go. Quest complete, and I get the amulet. Of mana boost which should mean that I don't run out of mana quite so easily. Let's open up my curios and see if I can put this in here. There we go, amulet slot. And I've got lots of ring slots so that should be good there. If I go back to my magic missile spell here and then I shoot this, I am spamming it as much as I can right now. Yeah, my, my mana is not dropping at all, so I can just constantly keep spamming the this really cheap spell right now <laughs> with a little problem. All right. Um, yeah, this is actually really, really fantastic. So now that I'm fully maged out with all these trinkets, yes, there are still plenty more that I can go through in here, uh, but I wanted to show you guys something that I found, and then I started exploring a bit more and found a lot more of, and I had totally overlooked it. Oh, well first, let's get rid of this Wave Whisperer here. Okay, they're, they're a lot tougher than I thought they would be. I was expecting it to die within a hit or two, but it, it did not. But I found this. I didn't make this path. This was here. And it leads down to something really weird. And I started looking around, and I found lots of other... You see all these little question marks on my... Uh, on here, like there's an ice dungeon and such. But I'm finding all these other ones near other locations. Like, underneath like this. I didn't even realize this was under my base. I just happened to see it while I was being attacked by something once. So I figured we could have a look at this and do a little bit of an explore. And yeah, it looks like my sword did take some damage but it repaired itself over time, so I'm guessing that's like a a special ability. What is dungeon wall? Uh, is that... I am so confused by this right now. Dungeon lamps, broken dungeon lamp, a cracked dungeon wall. Maybe I can... Uh, I, guess, I mean, it looks like I can break through on any of these ones, but I'm a bit weary of, or a bit scared of doing so. Yeah, look at that. There's, there's something in there. I can use this spell to just grab these things real easy. Uh, maybe I put back some dun cracked and regular dungeon wall uh, in the meantime so that I don't get the water flowing in here. This looks cool. 
Uh, I currently have this set to just be breaking blocks. I have no idea what's going on here, but it is a puzzle master. Okay, so let's explore this. I've never used one of these before. I've heard of puzzle dungeons, but I've never actually done anything with them. Uh, so here we go. I made the advancement buried secrets. Secrets. Okay, smiley face. Creeper face. It's a mysterious minigame dungeon. Um, okay, I'm guessing I just... Okay, gosh, that startled me. We need more flags? What? Um, get the chance to play Minesweeper flag. Oh, gosh. So I have a chance of just instantly losing <laughs> because that's how Minesweeper works. Oh, okay, that worked pretty good. If you guys haven't played Minesweeper before, it's kind of interesting. Oh, no. Okay, I totally messed this up. Yep, okay. <laughs> Wait, do I get to go again? I have two attempts left. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Same one again. Uh, let me see if I can figure this one out then. Okay, all right, I'm getting somewhere. A little bit of logic kicking into my brain. That's another single, okay. And, okay, I think it's the same. Oh no, that could be a third, okay. Oh gosh, I hate this part. This is where it comes down to just being a 50-50 chance if you're right or wrong, because it, it could be here. Or could be here. Oh gosh, just just do it, Valen. Oh, for crying out loud! <laughs> One attempt left. Yeah. Okay. I, I needed to clear more away before I could actually do that. But all right. Well, I still get some kind of reward, and the dungeon lamps and walls and stuff. Oh, hey, look at this. That's not bad. I still got some stuff. Reinforced integral components. Nice. More source gems and oh, enchanted hearts. Yes, please. Let's just get. Wait, do I? Can I use these for anything? No. All right. Just I'm just straight up using them to reduce the difficulty of things right now. Okay. So I got some. I got some free stuff. That's cool. Now I think I'm gonna try and get out of here and go check out some of these other locations that I found. And here's another one you probably remember the uh, the different like magical trees and stuff like that. Well, it's got another stairway going down underneath one of these, though I'm having some problems breathing. All right, question mark number two. This one's just a question. Game of Light. Oh, is this Simon? Is this Simon Says? Click on the center block. Okay. Is this where I basically have to choose the same symbols uh, in a certain order that it, it that it shows? You just need to repeat the colors. Right. Ah, okay, yep, I messed up. <laughs> well, what happens now? Does it reset? Do I just instantly fail? Uh, looks like I might get another try. Ah, oh, okay. Boy, this was like so difficult. Oh, man. These things are crazy. Almost got the brains. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll just take the, the goodies and go. I got a scarab talisman. There is no required slot talisman. You can unlock it with drowned belt, Michelle's memento, and leather belt. Abilities, winds of the desert, plus 15% movement speed in the desert biomes. Chitin uh, chitin chitinous claws, plus 10% block breaking speed. Claustrophobia blocks suffocation damage and grants wear invisibility while inside blocks. Burrow. Buries and digs where into the blocks. Underneath. That's so weird. Okay, well, I'll take that too. And then it looks like I got some warp scrolls, which are great because I needed those for uh, just getting <laughs> to uh, unlock some stuff. I think that was actually one of the quests I needed to do. It's a warp scroll, which requires a bunch of more source gems, which I, I didn't really have much of. But I do get some rabbit seeds from it. And those are good for just, like, teleporting around uh, in the same dimension. Let's see what we get this time. Oh, it's another Minesweeper one. Okay, I wonder how many different kinds there are.
I'm back from my trip, and it appears that there are only the two minigames, one being, of course, Minesweeper, which I am absolutely terrible at, uh, and the other uh, being that Game of Light, or Simon Says, kind of just a game of memory, but then it kind of switches up halfway through. I was able to do pretty good with that one. Uh, I got close uh, a few times to getting it completely, but not, not quite. Anyway, let's take a look at the loot that I got. And here you go. This is pretty much everything I got, minus some of the mundane things I threw out. But it was pretty productive, I gotta say. I mean, I even got some money out of it. I got 20 more gold ingots. Uh, I did mine up a bunch of arcane stone. That was me just mining things. But I also got this scarab talisman, which is something of interest. I, I am curious about that. As well as a few just generally useful things uh, that I, I think I'm going to be sorting into my multiple multitude of chests. Uh, so I think I'm going to finish off a couple things and then we're going to call it there. But I'm going to be making a ritual brazier. Uh, rituals are powerful versions of spells and come in semi-permanent or single-use forms. You'll need a ritual brazier and a tablet of the ritual you want to perform. Place your brazier down and use the tablet on it. The brazier will ignite. Throw in any additional augment items on top of the brazier. See Worn Notebook for details. Uh, as I know, I'm going to be needing this in order to uh, perform some certain rituals, if I so desire, to do so. It's relatively cheap, but I'm glad that I did get some more of the gold from the uh, those different uh, treasure dungeons that I just found. There we have it, one simple ritual brazier. I'm just going to set it here for now. Looks pretty cool. I do like it. I get a tablet of fertility, a tablet used for rituals consumed on use. So it would seem that I just kind of place this on here and it would do some kind of fertility where it, it's probably growing things uh fertility i would guess maybe it's going to increase the amount of like uh animals mating or something like that probably uses source i'm not really certain on this case but either way uh it's pretty neat and looking in the journal it does state that it basically will require source on some cases but not necessarily all you can amplify it as it'll wait but you just right click with an empty hand in order to completely activate it the uh, placing of the uh, the tablet will just kind of tell it to d that you want something to happen, but um, you're still potentially waiting to activate it. By doing a hashtag ritual, uh, I can find different things that are used for rituals. In this case, a tablet of flight. Ooh, that could be interesting. Uh, would that allow me to fly around the base? A tablet of sunrise. Uh, I would assume that would make it daytime. Overgrowth, that one sounds like it would make crops grow. I think that the fertility is going to allow animals to grow, to uh, multiply. Moonfall probably makes it nighttime. Tablet of Binding, uh, that sounds like it actually holds something down. Maybe enemies, maybe myself, I don't know. The Summon Wilden one, I was reading in this, and it's actually cool. You can summon a boss to fight, or just regular Wilden, depending upon what you end up using. And since I did get... A bunch of ingredients for that. Uh, I think it's like any of the Wilden drops for these, for these. And it would be four of the wings, which I, I did not get any of the wings. Oh, sad face. But uh, four of the wings as well, and I would be able to use that to summon a boss. But you do have to be careful if you summon the boss and not just regular Wilden. Because apparently it will blow up the area. Uh, at least that's what it was uh, stating in the stuff I was reading uh, in these books. Yeah, and I only have two Wildin' Wings in my normal storage, so I will have to uh, try and use my Looting Sword on some Wildins in general to try and get enough drops for a, a boss fight. Tablet of Awakening? I have no idea. It's got a picture of a little dude. Um, but am I awakening, like, the Eldritch Lord, or is it something simpler, like uh, somebody wakes up? <laughs> Tablet used for ritual uh, burrowing. Challenge. Cloud shaping. Disintegration. Holy cow. Warping. And restoration. All right, well, there's lots of curiosities in here, that's for certain. So looking up something like the Tablet of Challenge summons an Illager raid when used inside a village. Emerald may be used to increase the difficulty of the raid to the maximum amount, making totems of the Undying accessible on easier difficulties. Augmenting has no effect on hard difficulty. That's interesting. So then I could look up each of these ones and see what each one does, like uh, Awakening, for example. It awakens nearby archwood trees into whaled walkers. 
Wild walkers, wailed walkers, walkers can be given a position in the world to guard against hostile mobs. They will heal over time and turn into wailed waddlers if they die. <laughs> to create a wailed walker, perform this ritual near the base of an archwood tree. That sounds really cool, actually. So you're animating a bunch of these into like tree ends of some sort. Uh, maybe I, I don't know. Uh, I might actually do that at, at some some point, but just not today, because I think. I have used up way more time than I need to. Uh, I have got to trim this video down so that you guys can digest it because I did a lot of those uh, little puzzle dungeons. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch, click the notification bell, and if you want to see more videos, don't be afraid to click one of those ones on screen now. See ya!